Welcome to another edition of the eSpot with Camille. The eSpot is your location for the latest in entertainment, beauty, and design from the people who make it. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the eSpot with Camille. And as you can see, we are already kicking off the party. I have the one and only Daryl Swan, who is a multi Grammy winning music producer with over 35 years of experience. Do not let this young man's face fool you. <laughs> 35. What's with all the gang signs? You're trying to get me canceled? No, I'm <laughs> And the gun sounds <laughs> only musicians. This is why I stopped. This is why I stopped messing with these musicians. They, they're trying to get me canceled That's and shadow band and copyright. Drop, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean, normally you guys know I don't start off with the guests already up here, but we started talking <laughs> off screen. I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, let me just press record and let this go. So, my guest. Daryl Swan, you have some exciting stuff that you're working on, but before we dive into that, i like for people to know who we're talking to and what you do. So share a little bit about how you made it to Mr. Multi-Platinum Grammy winning producer with oh, over Lord. 35 years and the credits, the credits are crazy. So Lord, Lord, Lord. All lies, lies, that far lies, back? all lies, all lies. What'd you say? Did you, <laughs> I said, you remember that far back? I'm kidding. Because, yeah, we're close in age. <laughs> you look half your age, girl. Well, I do go to the mad spa. <laughs> you can check my Instagram. I share it all. Botox, skincare, everything. You can find out what I use. Right. There's no gatekeeping over here. So, go ahead, girl. Thank you. I try my best. You do. You do. Yeah. So, Where shall I start? What should I do? Yeah. Like, how did you get into the music industry? What made you decide, I want to do this for a living? I started out playing in a metal band when I was 13 with two other brothers, two other black dudes, three brothers playing metal. We were called the Lab Rats. We used to rock basements. I swear yeah. to God. Judas Priest, Van Halen. Yeah. So it was, it was really a trip because I have two brothers and my father was a music kid. So I shared a room with my brother and he was a mu- he's still my music. He's still my, uh, my music icon. He has the best ears ever. He exposed me to so much. We would mm-hmm. smoke bongs and just listen to albums. He would just turn me on and stuff. Then my father would be down in the basement playing the jams, always playing the soul stuff. And then my mm-hmm. younger brother was in the punk. So uh, I was just really exposed to it. So much music, so much music, everything. I love the diversity of it because black people were not a monolith. You know? I know. No, and so much not. of like rock and all of that was created, hello, by us. Dude, blues is the foundation of all contemporary music. Blues music, I, I, I could go into a whole rabbit hole with that. <laughs> blues, I'll say this. Blues came from slave hymns, right? From slaves. Uh, blues had two children. One was a sophisticated child named Jazz. The other one was a rebellious child named Rock. Modern music, meaning, you know, popular music, not European music like classical music or you know, stuff like that. Contemporary music. So where does country come from? Here's an interesting hypothesis. So blues came from the South. Right and migrated up, but the Scots, the Scottish people, migrated into the north, into the Appalachian Mountains, and so they brought their their instruments. So it was a combination of those those Scottish instruments with blues that created country country western. Very <laughs> <interesting>, <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> yes, Isn't that cool. Yeah, but very it's blues based. Blues based, yeah. but it has a different twang than contemporary like gospel, R and B, this and that, rock and roll. So, yeah, I love I love the history. So that being said, I started out with a in a heavy metal band with uh, two brothers in the basement, and uh, we were terrible, but we were having fun. But that evolved into a, a more polished band called Haven uh, through my through high school in Cleveland, Ohio. And then this manager, this woman, grown woman, brought five teenage boys out to LA in 1986, and we came out here and we played all the gigs. I w- I should have sent you a picture. You should. I would love for you to share this picture, but I don't send have it. Any. I can edit it in. Yeah, I will. I will. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah, we came up with this metal band and we played all the clubs around, you know, the Zaris and the Roxy and Troubadour and played with the band Poison before they were signed. We did this whole thing. Then I started uh, engineering in a studio called Silver Lake Recording in the late 80s. And I learned how to engineer. I learned how to make beats with the MPC-60. Wait, back up just one little bit. Only yeah. because I feel like 
some of my audience, they're more on the entertainment side of like film, TV, and so on. Okay. Or even like newcomers altogether may not understand completely what does an engineer, especially since I live in like technology central, the second uh-huh. Silicon Valley area, they yeah. might not understand what exactly does that mean as being an engineer in the music space. Totally. All right, cool. So I will say this. First of all, the uh, a music producer, people are like, what does a music producer do? A music producer is exactly the same job as a film director. So we all know what a film director does. You're the you're the boss. You're you are the you you come with the with the uh, creative idea, or you take the 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 uh, the property and you put the aesthetic on it. You you have the visual ideas and the whole. You get the performances from the actors. You hire the cinematographer. You hire the wardrobe. You do every. You're basically the central hub for the creative process of making a film. That's a director. Film a music producer, same exact job, but in a recording studio. So a uh, record producer, uh, recording, um, producing a band is very different than recording a solo artist. It's very different than recording a, just a performer. There's different ways to approach it. Just like a director, a directing animation is different than directing humans on a set. So, but make a long story short, you're still the boss. So what is an engineer? So an engineer would be equivalent to a cinematographer. Engineer mm-hmm. would be, or a DP, a director of photography. The engineer is the the guy or girl, the guy or lady who basically sets up the mics, knows how to adjust mic microphone preamps, compressors, equalizers, um, basically Play with capturing that board. Yeah, capturing the actual sound. Just like a cinematographer captures the the uh, the visual, the engineer captures the audio. And, and just like a cinematographer, there's tons of layers in terms of microphones. Like there's tons of lenses. There's so many. It's like I was able to tell you what kind of mic you're using an sm7 right there yeah that's a, that's a cardioid dynamic mic it's unpowered he made can't by see sure. anything and he can tell what it is like, yes i love that go ahead it's sorry a, it's an unpowered dynamic mic with a frequency range of about 50 hertz up to about about 15k so we don't get the full spectrum but i won't go into that I'm uh, so that now, I'm going to ask you what all of that means more oh, so okay. i can even have better sound because i recently was nominated for best big sound or something like best you do have really excellent sound and you have a compressor on i can hear they you have a compressor so your voice is like the cloud lifter is that what you're talking about no it's there's some uh there's an audio device called a compressor that that keeps the peaks from going too high there's a cushion on the uh, ceiling to keep your voice like controlled it sounds it sounds really professional it sounds like it's compacted so whoever hooked you up with your sound is doing the right joint very nice job Thank you. Thank you. It's a combination of people because um, the mic came from one of my clients, Danny Russo, but the Roadcaster, which is my, I guess maybe that's the audio compressor. Oh, and he also gave me the cloud lifter. The Roadcaster, Tremaine Williams, who is also a sound engineer, but he works for my carry. So I was kind of like, if he knows, if anybody knows sound when it comes to women's voices, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, he's worked with the queen. Not that I peak as high as her um, or can sing. He knows. Or, you know what I mean? He knows how to. He knows. And he also works like Swedish mafia, uh, Swedish house mafia, like a lot of people. So much like yourself, because I went down the rabbit hole and looked at your, um, your resume. And, oh my God. You have worked with everyone, but I want to get back to, so you were moved here. You were performing. Yeah. I'll how did it real you, fast. I'll yeah. How did you get into fast. sound engineering? Because a lot of people go to school for that, but you were able to figure it out by being a performer first. Yeah, I was actually the I was the, actually the guy in the band that was responsible for setting up the PA system, setting up mm. the PA, the public address system, the speakers, the mic. So while I'm playing a solo, I'd hear feedback and have to use one arm, and you know, or when the guys were chasing the girls at the backyard party, I'm the guy setting the PA up and the wires and making sure I was that guy. So I understood mm. signal flow and microphones from a, as a kid. I was always fascinated with it, very fascinated with it. Mm. So <clears throat> when I got into the recording studio, sorry, there's a siren coming by. Hey, really? I, uh, Yes, real life's going on. When I got to the recording studio in 1989, my first session, my first session as a second engineer was L.A. and Babyface, The Whispers, that song, rock, da, da, steady, steady, rocking all night long. You remember that song? Yeah, I do. Old school, Jen. That was the first session I was in second engineer. I'll still remember that. Still, I still remember that as like it was yesterday. But that being said, I started working. I started engineering. I learned how to engineer. I learned how to make beats on the drum machine and sampling from vinyl. I learned how to produce. I would bring in bands and like solo artists at like four in the morning when there was no clients in there. And I would say, let's record this. And I would 
you know, just out of uh, out of trying to maximize the time, I would say, try this, try that. And that's really what producing is, getting, uh, offering ideas, getting performances out of people, facilitating the whole process. So I learned all these skill sets just on some, yeah. like, Forrest Gump shit, you know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> I'm fa I failed backwards. I, I won failing backwards, you know, just yeah. by, just by. Uh, but you're just still by living trying. the dream. That's the thing. Because a lot of times people move to L.A. or get moved to L.A., life hits, or the dream doesn't take off as quickly as their budget will allow. Yeah. And they yeah. end up never getting, you know, their waiting tables for the rest of their lives or 100%. doing everything but they wanted to do. So you were smart that you didn't just try to only stick with performing. You learned all the things. Like so one of the things I hear kind of consistently is that when you are working in the entertainment industry, don't just learn your area, yeah. but every area you can, because then you're not replaceable. Because yes. <laughs> you can yeah. always find another job doing something, being on set or being in the studio and being at the right place, right time for the next opportunity. Yeah, it's a fine line between uh, uh, really zeroing in and being the best at one thing and mm -hmm. also having other skill sets also there's some people that like to be swiss army knives jack of all trades and they can jump around or there's other people that are like like totally like the guy you know mm -hmm. for this in this lane but they understand how to do these things so yeah. uh me personally i've uh, been a bit of a swiss army knife but i really have my my core competencies the crazy thing also is it's i always uh <clears throat> i'm always evolving so i started out as a performer and then turn into a producer and engineer this and that so now in 2014 i have evolved into music technology virtual concert mm -hmm. so i'm like who who spends their entire adult life learning a craft for 30 years right <laughs> learning a craft and like you know uh, achieving some levels of success and you know really understanding the craft truly 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 and then jumps into something completely different you know it's like that's what my ass did, you know? I mean, midlife crisis can happen in many different ways. I wouldn't even call it a midlife crisis. Because I think, it, like, a lot of times, I don't know, I'm not going to speak, just a lot of times in the entertainment industry, people tend to be a little ADHD. And you can, like, for me anyway, it's like, there's nothing I think I can't do, or at least I'm willing to try, and just to see if I'm good at it. Because even getting into the industry, it was one of those things where, People are like, oh, you're good at this. You should try. You should do. This. Okay, let me try that. You know, it's like sometimes it's just a matter of falling into other things and realizing that you're good at other stuff. And I was going to say one of the things about being a Swiss Army knife is that when one element disappears, you have other things you can still do because that's going to be yeah. the thing like with AI, all these other stuff. Like there's yeah, going to be a lot yeah. of less people needed for oh, certain areas. And so you're going to yeah. need to be able to multitask and do a lot of different things yeah. in order to be again unreplaceable yes so oh, but you're not just in that you also teach at ucla so that's why he's really good at explaining things that's why i'm asking you because sometimes people take advantage of the fact that everybody knows what they're talking i know about. i know so you're really like, like you're the perfect person to ask because you really did like a great job of explaining it so even Thank i you. i'm not saying I, I didn't understand what it was before but um <laughs> You know, the novices out there might be like, oh, that's what it is. But I'm well, you're like hilarious. I love you. You're hilarious. <laughs> well, I, thank you very much. I, uh, my next life, I will be a, a comedian. I, yeah. I hope. I'm here all night. Tip your waitress. You know but yeah. I don't know, because I've heard some evil things about comedy for women. So maybe not. But emceeing may be comedy. I don't know. We'll figure it out. You should be an MC. You know. should be an MC for sure. Your energy is is infectious. I love it. See, Very and cool. I like. I also like. I used to. I grew up like watching Johnny Carson and all that kind of stuff, and Richard Pryor, all the things. Oh, but okay. um, and sorry, yeah. but, but a variety show would be fun. Anyway, I'm digressing. We're talking about you today. I want to show your big secret that you. Well, it's not really a big secret, but your newest love that you're you talked about that you jumped out of the music industry and yeah. got into music technology. Yes. What made you make that leap first off? And then we're going to show a little sample. You're going to talk us through your cool no, thing that you're working on currently. No doubt. Absolutely. It's called Mosh Pit. And so basically, here's the thing. Uh, I've been in the music industry for, what, 30 years, 35 years? And I intuitively always felt that there was something broken in the music industry. And there's a ton of things, unconscionable contracts, you know, you know, I can go through a whole list. I mean, every industry has their, has their things, but the music industry is a little more ghetto than other industries. I don't know. I think they're kind of, the music industry is kind of like the Reddit stepchild of all of the other entertainment factors, film, TV, internet. It's so exploitive. 
it's it's exactly it's super good and there's no union too i think is part of it because there's no limitations it's like the wild wild west uh, we won't Hunter Thompson. a certain producer that likes to dance in all the videos and all that kind of stuff and all the things that have come out with him it's i yeah. remember hearing those kinds of stories as a kid when my father used to manage a certain singer and it wasn't him but it was his entourage even because mm -hmm. the, the rumors about groupies you they weren't checking their ages but they were also no. Leaving them with the bill. That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's like it Hunter was like Thompson, the uh, Hunter Thompson, the writer, has the best passage about the music industry. He says, uh, "I'll paraphrase it: the music industry is a cold, plastic money trench where good men die like dogs and thieves run wild." He's like, "There is a bad side, also. You know, there is a negative side, also." <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I just recently interviewed Sheila E, who is an icon. Yes, and she, I was asking her, "What would, what advice would you give to new people trying to get, or to women getting into the industry?" She's like, "Don't, don't do it. <laughs> it's not a safe space. It's you, you can't make money now because of streaming." Um, concerts and merchandise is where you can make money. Even that, it's so expensive. And this, and she was like, "Just do it from home with TikTok. You don't need to get in the." Or well, she didn't name out TikTok because she didn't know Mosh Pit exists. But you know, That's she right. was kind of like, "I have oh. a new solution." And so, solution. wait, wait, wait. You have a new solution? Yes, we have a new solution. So, uh oh, did it? Busy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> like I had the volume all the way down, so it didn't work the first time. So I was like, you have a new solution? You have a new solution? <laughs> okay, no, I'll be here all week. You know, I love, my new, I love my new toy. I forget to play with it as much. But yeah, so you that. have a new solution. And yes. So this is why I created this thing called Mosh Pit, guys. Because the music, at, in 2023, there are hundreds of millions of DIY aspiring artists that are starving. Everyone and their mother wants to be a DJ or rappers in a band. And the thing is, is that the only, if you don't have a record deal, you don't have a record deal or some major distribution uh, company behind you or an advertiser behind you, you are stuck with four lanes of distribution. YouTube, 3.7 million uploads a day videos. Instagram, 95 million posts a day. TikTok, 30 million posts a day. Spotify, 60,000 streams. Uh, 60,000 songs uploaded a day. Digital distributors. If you don't have a record deal, you have to go through a digital distributor. A digital distributor is a ghetto work for hire record company. So you basically, if you don't have a record deal, you got you give them your, their stuff and they shotgun spray it to all like Google Play and Apple Music. But they do that for 14 million other artists. So what I'm saying is if, you, if this was 2006, 2007, where YouTube had just launched, you would be at the beginning and you would be able to be a vast, vast, ground for you to plant your flag but now with 3.7 million streams of uh, videos being uploaded to youtube daily it's completely saturated so if you are part of those 100 million global artists that are aspiring around the globe and they're hustling they're doing gigs they're posting on tiktok which doesn't work people because it's too much it's a full-time job one way it works is if you do something super edgy or you have someone doing it full-time it to be really because it's too saturated. It's too saturated. Yeah. I that remember there was an um, artist here in North Carolina who went viral about a song in the summer. And a summer, a summer it was it was kind of off of the LF, LMFA. Uh, no, it wasn't LMFA. What was those guys? UFO, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, mm -hmm. it was similar to that. But he made a point of saying that he figured out what were the beats that were trending. Yes. And like just changed it up a little bit and put in his own words and like, trendy things in it and it went viral for that reason but that was the beginning of the pandemic and the beginning of, right. <laughs> of tiktok so it was really easy to like you said to blow up but yes where is early, he now? early adopters on, on new platforms yeah. are the ones that get the, i mean you think you remember chocolate rain it's on yeah. it was the first like you chocolate rain oh i remember insurance rates are going up chocolate rain and it was, it was, why don't we we watched that because there was nothing else on youtube and it was kind of obnoxious it was hilarious so mm -hmm. that went viral. But now if you release chocolate right now, it's like it's it's highly like unlikely that anything would happen. So it's a full time job because it's so saturated. It's like a, a bunch of glass shards on a table and there's a couple mm -hmm. diamonds thrown within those glass shards. Like it's hard to tell the diamonds from the glass shards. So what most people mm -hmm. are having to do is they're having to figure out the algorithm. It's like science now. It's like it shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't be this hard. So no. what we've created is we've created a brand new way to create content. So let me just say something really fast. Oh, so sure. if you think about you, uh, MTV, MTV was a pivotal, pivotal moment in the music industry. Before MTV, MTV came out in August 1981. 
So <clears throat> before MTV, you think about it. How did you interact with an artist of, as a fan? You went to the concert, you bought their record, and you heard them on the radio. And mm -hmm. you maybe joined their fan club, got a t-shirt. That was it. There was no visual. There was no mm -hmm. visual. MTV came out. Summer, I was a kid. Summer of 1981. There were no kids on the street in the summer of uh, 1981 because everyone was sitting in front of the TV going, what? 24 yeah. seven videos? What? Yeah. What? It was. That's I can't. what they look like? Madonna's black? I mean, dude, not black? <laughs> no, dude, seriously. It, yeah, was I like, know. it was literally like, 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 like a goddamn, like, it was the best thing ever. 24-7 mm -hmm. music videos and just all these new colors and visuals and wow. It created so many sub economies. I mean, so you think about that. That was absolutely a new canvas for artists to to express themselves, you know, and for young mm. directors to come in. It it was a brand new canvas. And so we take it for granted now, where like I think about a music video is is as ubiquitous as oxygen or the internet or anything else. Or Tesla's on LA streets. It's like so many, there's so many, they're so ubiquitous, but it did not exist before. You know, did not exist. And you it's almost have to place. wait for the videos to become viral to even hear about it because MTV doesn't really show music videos anymore. Well, when they and, did, though, I'm saying it was. Yeah. Like, no, no. I, I tried out for TRL. What are you talking about? Oh, I was obsessed. Wow. I wanted. Oh, wow. My dad did the movie Who's the Man? And that right. was by Yo, Yo MTV Raps. Um, so Fab Five Freddy, wow. Dr. Dre, Ed Lover, yeah. they were all in that. You remember now. Dang. <laughs> so I was living my life and. Um, I can't remember the director's name, but he did a Ted Demi. He was the director. Ted with, Demi, yeah. he, his dad did Silence of the Lambs and stuff. Yeah, he died from a heart attack because drug cocaine's a hell of a drug. I think maybe I uh, could be wrong. Um, but anyway, I never saw him doing cocaine. I'm just saying I think that's what happened. I don't know. So if I'm wrong, I will cut this out. But <laughs> because uh, I've been wrong before with um, people's deaths. Um, so anyway, um, I was obsessed with that. I was uh, like. I moved around a lot. I was usually the only black person in my class or school. And so there was times they looked at me to know all the rap. I mean, yeah, all the yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, and I, yeah. well, I haven't always sound like this. I had to go through a speech pathologist because I sounded German before. Uh, German. I live in Germany. Yeah. So <laughs> long story. <laughs> but um, like I moved to America when I was like 14. Okay. So um, like he helped, uh, but that was on the set of, uh, who's the man where they worked with me and to get rid of my accent. Cause I was like, I want to, I want to do this. And I don't know if you remember UMTV, they had like baseball cards. Yes. Yeah. So man, I was... bought the baseball cards and I had, and since so many of the rappers were on the show and a lot of the newbies didn't know who they were, I cut out all their images from the baseball cards and made oh and laminated God. cards for them. Cause I was like obsessed. Oh my but I also God. watched all the dances. And so long story short, wow. I tried out for TRL. They, um, they, I was disqualified after making it top 10, got to meet Jay-Z, the whole thing. Cause he was there mm -hmm. for the performance for, um, cause you know, they wow. went to several different States to mm -hmm. find a new mm -hmm. TRL host, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got disqualified when they found out I was union. Cause I just had started working on Dawson's Creek and oh, uh, you were in Dawson's Creek. Really? I mean, because the NAACP was giving them crap. So they threw in some tokens one season, allegedly. I <laughs> never watched the show. So. There was some tokens. Huh? You know, when, Even some when you know that's the reason you're there. Like, <laughs> If there were a token, lights getting good her, you know what I mean? They ain't right. They're just, they just stepping there. Sticking their toe over the line. They're not going all the well, way. I'm not in. even that way. Like, all brothers, you know. Yeah. Just, just give me a high yellow. It's close to white, you know. <laughs> well, and I was like, I guess the dark. No, I wasn't because um they had Boba, not Boba. Um, I can never say his name. Baba Tunda. I can't believe his name. But he was in it, and um, Bianca Lawson. So okay. I wasn't. Yeah, there was definitely lighter than me. Uh, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. You were lying. You were like brown paper bag. That's as far as we go. No darker. <laughs> Dude, why was I just in an ad and they cut me out? Huh? I was just in an ad and they cut me out. I'm going to assume it's because it was on social media. So it's this real, but they had my mom, my daughter, we did a um, Christmas ad together and you can see them. And then they gave us a son and uh, or I guess my mom and grandson and they cut my, my dark ass out. <laughs> Brown paper bag. You I don't care. I got paid anyway. So I don't You're care. You're out. Like only high yellows, <laughs> only high yellows. Like, I need to figure out how to be more racially ambiguous because I like working. But, hey, send me the check anyway. I'm not mad about it because it could be just, you know, it was on social media. Maybe the other one is 
a more full shot. I'm not saying that they might not have cut me out. <laughs> I hope <laughs> that's you harsh. Need, <laughs> you need a TV show, Camille. You need a TV show. You, you need to be an MC. You're too hilarious. Make it happen. You know all the right people. I saw your resume, but let's get back to you. I will. Less about me, more about you. All right. In this mosh pit. All right. Yeah, this is the all only right. mosh pit I feel safe enough to jump into. So That's don't right. Stop. That's right. There we go. So with that being said, everything's saturated. These artists are starving. And any artist to create an enterable virtual concert. Anybody that saw the Travis Scott Fortnite event in 2020, that had 10 million simultaneous people inside, and it has over a billion views after it made $30 million. It was a groundbreaking event. It was a paradigm shift. It, it totally proved a new model, which is video gaming and music go together like tacos on Tuesday. I swear to God. So what, but to make something like that, it's, it's, the, it's, it's really difficult to make because you need manpower, you need money, you need a big artist. So what we have done is we have democratized that Travis Scott Fortnite experience so anybody can make an enterable show. So what is Moshpit? Moshpit is a, a concert gaming platform where if I'm a DM artist, I'm little Johnny from Arkansas, right? I'm in my bedroom making my music, but I only have one stream on YouTube. I only have one view on so-and-so. I only have so-and-so and so. Yeah, little Johnny, everything's saturated. Hey, try this. Capture yourself performing, little Johnny. Ah, ah, ah. Take that performance video. Upload it into our creator tool. Then choose a virtual venue. You want to play at Madison Square Garden? You want to play at CBGB's? You want to play in some dusty living room? All right, <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Next step, move your timeline. So now you appear on the stage, little Johnny, on Madison Square Garden, on the big jumbotrons. Next, move your camera. Make your camera moves and your, your lights and your different uh, timelines. Hit publish. Guess what, little Johnny? Out pops an enterable concert. That goes up to our platform, and people can actually go inside your concert. Oh, my God. Let's take a look at what that looks like. This is what a concert looks like. This is a game player running around inside. So that's me running inside. And little Johnny's up on the stage. He's on the stage, plus he's a giant hologram of himself. You can scroll forward, Camille, and give us a little, little more vibe. There's tons of fans. There's 100,000 uh, uh, fans in there that you can interact with. Little Johnny. Oh my God, look at your front row now. That's me trying to get up to your stage. And re remembering correctly, you can decide where you go. So if you have friends that you want to enjoy this yeah, concert yeah, yeah, with, yeah. You, you guys can do it together. Like it, yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be singular, like, you know, just no. you by yourself at a concert. You still get that experience of doing it with other people. Yeah, you could. Be, there could be 50 of you in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we've also stuck 100,000 uh, AI fans in there for you 50 to beat up. And have fun with and dance with. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can skip a little further, Camille. Yeah. A little further. Oh, there it is. Okay. And you'll actually let it go because it's gonna it's gonna take you over to the uh to the cafeteria. You'll take a look at this is just one wow. environment of thousands that people so there will be just like there's on YouTube, there's millions of videos, there's going to be millions of these little mini worlds that people have created with their music, and so people will be able to go inside, just like YouTube. There are people that Upload videos to YouTube. There's people that go watch videos. Ours is, you know, people will actually create interval environments, and then people will actually go inside those environments, watch your concert, play around, buy stuff, beat people up, play games. So this is one world. We modeled this off of Coachella. This is our virtual mm -hmm. Yes. And so we've made it. So, like, it's hard to see through the stream but because it's super dark, but... Um, you get the idea. This is what Mosh Pit is. So we're going to be doing a public reveal Q1 of 2024. And so this is just, these are some test shots that uh, I created just so we could show it on this podcast here. But this is coming out and we feel that it's a blue ocean for millions of DIY artists and celebrity artists to have, be able to create an interval experience for anyone. It's simple. It lives in the cloud. You don't have to download anything. You can make a show from your laptop. You can go in a show from your phone or your laptop, move around with a character, or you can go VR and you're looking out of your character's eyes. Mm. So it's a creation tool for, for artists and it's a new experience for users. YouTube, you can go inside. Think of it like that. If you could go inside every video on YouTube, that's what Moshpit is. No, I love that because like so many times 
some of these artists, like the price of admission is yeah. like, who can afford to go to every yes. person that went on tour this summer? Even if wanted, 500 bucks. Yeah. And like, even if it wasn't so expensive, like just even like the time of it all, the recovery, yeah. well, at my age, the recovery. <laughs> Because my knees are always killing me in my feet because I am jumping up the entire time, singing along with the lyrics, pretending I'm still in the 90s. Because I, 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 when I was younger, I went to every concert I could. Yeah, My parents were always strict about hip-hop concerts, probably from working with some I'm hip-hop I'm sure. Concerts. Their daughter um, at a hip-hop concert, yes. So, like, the first concert that I went to was hip-hop was um, Naughty by Nature, but only because they were performing in the movie. Before. Oh, my God. Naughty by Nature? <laughs> OPP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I can't God. remember if that was Who's the Man or... Yeah, I think that was Who's the Man. But anyway. Um, so, I love that this experience gives you that same vibe. You get that same yeah. opportunity to enjoy it with a friend. Yes. Um, that you can do at VR, where it feels like you're really right in that place. If you, if you have choose. VR headset. Yeah, like yeah. You're, there's options. But yeah. also for creatives, it gives them a way yes. to have multiple streams of income doing what yes. they want. Instead of having yes. to learn multiple different things. Yeah, man. It's, it's a it's a <laughs> yeah. jump point. It's really, it's like, I mean, you think about TikTok, it's a brilliant creation device. If right. you, what, you, could, you could put a video, you can put text over it, you can add audio on top, and you can put filters. It's a little mini creation studio. That's mm-hmm. what Moshpit is, but you can actually go inside ours instead of it just being a flat video. That's what it is. Simple and easy, easy to use and powerful storytelling medium. That's what Moshpit is, but ours, you go inside. And people can navigate where TikTok, you just look at a flat video. So yeah. we are uh, uh, advancing the uh, the paradigm in terms of letting people go inside things instead of just looking at videos. We're tired of looking at flat videos. Plus also, I'll say this really fast. There is a whole generation of kids that do not know a world without the internet, smartphones, social media. They're like, what'd you guys do? What'd you guys do? It's like our asking our parents, what did you guys do before TV? Oh, we listened to the radio. Then those people said to their grandparents, what did you do before radio? We read <laughs> books. And before Gutenberg, people were like, what did you guys do before books? We told stories. We told yeah. stories from the the elders told us stories. So if you think about it, it's all relative. So there's a current generation that does no war without the internet, smartphones. They're like, what did you do? There's going to be a new generation, believe you me, that is, will not know a world without immersion being able to go inside. So if you think about it, they're going to look back and they're going to be like, so you guys just clicked on buttons on a screen. You just yeah. texted and just clicked on buttons on websites. And so like, yeah. like, like how did you do anything? They're, they're not going to be, because they're going to, because every website is going to be enterable. Oh, be even enterable. the rota- rotary phone. They're like, what? Oh, seriously. They're like, how'd you, they'll be like, how, how do you do this? How do you work this? Literally had to start all over if you misdialed. But, um, yes. I, when I, you were saying those things about, um, how it's going to be so easy. I want to make a point of like, you were showing me how easy it was to just even make that video. Like, well, not mm-hmm. the demo version, but the real version on your website. You, um, yes. We went inside. It's not yeah, open for general public yet, but you, it was so like easy drop. Like you don't have to be super tech no. savvy in order no. to make a video that looks very similar to what you just showed me. And you can get backup dancers that, cause I went and played around with us. You can get background dancers that are dancing with you. And this isn't something that you're limited to, to only musicians because That's right. how fun would it be to be a comedian yes. or to yeah. be a, um, a magician, a ballerina. That's I don't it. care. You know, you, there's it. so many different options that you can use this for that That's maybe you wouldn't have, um, you know, other people that could do this with you. Cause a lot of times like people are like, Oh, just make your own movies. You could just use your own with who sway. Exactly. Who am I going to get <laughs> to be? Exactly. I live in North Carolina. Do you know how many people just have free time to be in my videos every time I want? Exactly. Oh, now a lot. Cause everybody works from home, but you know, <laughs> so, it's still like, you have not everybody You're has right. that skill of just asking people and them giving yeah. willingly to your dream just because you have it. And this 100%. is a way where you could do that. 100%. This is a, so thank you for bringing that up, Camille, because here's the thing. So it, right now it's a concert creation platform, but concerts and music artists, it's just our first target. They're the lowest hanging fruit because there's masses of them. There's, there's tens of millions of them globally. They're really hungry. They have tons of pain points. So they are low. And plus I know them because I've been one. 
So they're our first initial target. But our pl platform, Moshpit, is really a an interval, a 3D environment creation tool and platform. So basically, you could create a theatrical performance. Uh, so instead of a concert, imagine yourself videotap videotaping yourself doing one character. And then you do a second character. So let's say you do five different characters. You put them on different timelines in the environment. They show up on a in a field or on a stage or whatever you want your TV production, your theatrical production to be presented. And then they will literally, you can actually make them move and say their words at different times. Mm -hmm. You can create the props. Just like the um, we're, our platform is built in the Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is being used by Hollywood now, like the Mandalorian, the Star Wars. They're uh, using Unreal to to help uh, to help um, set designs and actually shoot things in Unreal because it's a real time uh, uh, real time graphics engine. So with that being said, you're able to create any kind of uh, production you want, comedy, theatrical, with different characters, and you can create all the backgrounds and the so and so. It's it's really a something. It's really something. It's a lot of technology. It's deep technology, but it's super simple to use. We're very excited about it, and people are really starting to uh, start to see the potential of what we have. Now, I have to ask the questions that has everybody kind of buzzing with AI and contracts and union. There's a lot, you know. I'm sure artists are protected when they submit their work that they don't have to worry about it being stolen or reused or their images. How do you safeguard that? Because I mean, I'm sure people can screen record, but at the same time, I mean, well, even with screen recording, it's not that bad of a thing but you know is there some protection levels there with them as well there are, it's that's humans are just humans humans are just some humans are just douchebaggy by nature it's just human nature so people will always figure out a way to jack your shit right mm -hmm. so with that being said i mean if you think about established uh you know mediums right now like radio or 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 downloading music there's people that i mean you think about there's always going to be people that are going to steal some shit so with moshpit the same thing we're going to implement you know tried and true uh methods to to uh try and protect copyright holders um the best way we can i mean but again people no matter what you do there's always going to be some way that people's going to jack your shit now the thing about ours is that it's an interval environment. So you're creating this like 3D world where all of your stuff is happening so people can actually go inside. So it's going to be really hard to for someone to steal your 3D world and take it. Mm. But they can always screen share it. But I'm sure eventually as, you know, computer processing, Moore's Law scales uh, further and and advancements in technology happen, I'm sure there's going to be a way where people will be able to actually jack your 3D environment and hold it hostage. I'm sure of that. So we'll do our best to stay up on that. And when quantum computers hit in the next 10 to 15 years, all cryptography is going to get busted. So we'll have to we'll have to keep eye out. You know, when the first uh, when the first uh, quantum computer goes online and becomes a uh, popular. But uh, until then, we explain will explain that to me what that is because the only thing I know about quantum is quantum leap from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, hey, you guys. All right, so check this out. There's been, a, okay, I'll say this really fast. Quick piece. Okay. So there's been all these shiny objects, right? We had, we had, we had social media, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the mid uh, 2000s, late 2000s. Then we had streaming, next shiny object. Then we had um, uh, VR in 2014 when Facebook bought Oculus 2014 for $2 billion. Then after that, we had uh, uh, um, Bitcoin started to get popular, even though it launched in, uh, 2009 started to get popular in 2014 2015 started to hit the, the radar then uh, uh blockchain got popular then nfts and then uh mm. you know cryptocurrencies and then after that the next shiny object covid hit virtual concerts became all things cl clubs closed down and then now ai is the new uh is the new shiny object now ai is the real deal these others were a little bit more transient ai is Absolutely, I think it's almost as important as the internet. On a little tangent there. No, it's fine because I, I like again, you're a professor, so <laughs> you have I'm a way of fast. explaining things. It works for me, but it, you have a way of explaining things that make it really easy for people to digest that may not be in that space. So I appreciate it. Oh, it didn't sound like gibberish. It's it's all clear in my head. 
Sorry. <laughs> I get excited. I talk fast. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I love it. Uh, um, I just, I, I want to make sure I get back to the mosh pit part too, yeah. just a little bit more, just because I want to make sure people understand that this is something that's coming soon. It's not quite out yet, but you're working on it now and you're wanting people to kind of get the understanding that this is at the ground level. So this is a place that you can go soon to start really building your platform, building your audience and 100%. time to get your um, entourage around you. So what are you looking for? What's the next steps with Mosh Pit now? Like how far are we to actually being able to download it on the app store? Like where, where in the process are you now? Yes. Well, first of all, uh, there's no downloading. There's, oh, so there's right. no app. Yeah. It's all in the cloud. So there's, yeah, that's uh, apps are kind of old school, you know, so uh, everything's mm -hmm. going to be living in the cloud, everything. Right. So you can access Everything you don't need any processing power on your local position. Everything, all the heavy lifting will be done up there, so you can access it with the cheapest computer, the cheapest phone, the most robust uh, uh, applications will be living up there. So, with that being said, we will be releasing 2024. We've been working on this technology for mm -hmm. over three years. Uh, super, super. Uh, uh, we've been off a lot. It's very ambitious, and but we have achieved it. Our CTO is he is really brilliant guy so with you know my uh, music understanding and his technical understanding we've really come together and, and put this together so 2024 is going to be launching just like youtube it launched in 2005 if you're within the first three four years of youtube launching you got the best ad revenue splits you got the most viewer traction because it wasn't saturated just no like i just had a um an influencer on earlier today who was telling me they used to make a dollar per exactly. thousand maybe and now exactly. it's 20 cents no Absolutely, because there's too many people. Yeah. Many people. So those first people, those first people that get on new platforms are the ones that that are able to claim the biggest stake. If you come in later, it's like going to a show. Come early, you front row. You come at the, when the show's starting, you're in the back row. So those early adopters are the ones that get that first mover advantage. So that being said, 2024, we're really going to be doing a big push. And I feel confident that these, these artists, because they have nothing else to do, they're all like so frustrated. So if there's a new way for them to create some content, they'd be like, hell yeah, let me try it. This is really cool. And it's to monetize too. Can you talk a little bit about the um, the way that you're going to help put some coins in their pockets, not just from maybe an agent sees it or maybe a real concert place sees it to have them perform, but there's a way before all of that that they can start yes. earning. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, there's hundred percent. It's uh, it's free to use, so any artist can create their own interval concert and put on the platform for free. We also have tiers that will unlock additional, you know, features for the tool. But anyone can create for free. The way they can monetize, there's an ad revenue split. Mm -hmm. That's a typical thing. But there's also they can they can sell merch if they have shows. Let's say they have, you know, if you think about artists will will create a music video for each of their songs, and some artists have. 30 songs. So they have 30 videos, right? On their yeah. YouTube channel. So if you think about uh, people creating concerts, instead of a video, videos, videos are going to be passe. They're going to be like, yo, go to my show. They're going to have 30 shows, you know, on the platform. Like going, each one is going to be in a different environment. And it's going to have a different aesthetic and a different song. It's going to be really crazy. So that being said, they can sell their merch in all of those, their digital merch and physical merch in all of the physical is you click on it, it's drop shipped to you, but the digital People can actually put it on like the Travis Scott. They sold oh, the like the skins, yeah, on Fortnite or whatever. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So there's that. They can actually charge for their shows, just like there's something called YouTubers now that didn't exist. Those are people on YouTube that have a giant following that watch them do stuff on YouTube. Duh, right? <laughs> well, this that happens with any with every platform. There's always uh, uh, front runners that are that have an audience. So. The same thing can be for this. So if there's a, a person that's a mosh pitter or whatever, mosh pitter, right? And they have a bunch of shows. They can start charging for their shows. They can start charging a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. There's that. There's a, there's a number of different other tiers and ways that they can monetize. But those are some of the main ones. The biggest one is building fan base. Because if you, bottom line, if you got bodies, eyeballs, people's attention, you can figure out how to monetize that. You yeah, can yeah. figure out how to monetize that. That's what it's all about is because we feel confident that we will have, just like YouTubers, we'll have mosh pitters where people are really using this tool. They're like, I'm really going to like pimp this mm -hmm. tool and I'm going to be the guy. I want to be the gal <laughs> in this medium. So then there would be people that'd be like, wow, that's a great show. I want to try and create a show. And they'll go and they'll do a first show and it'll look average. And they'll be like, I can do better. And then they'll, you know, influence another generation. 
So yeah. that's the thing. We want that ripple effect. We want that network effect, ripple effect to take, yeah. uh, to take hold. So when this idea first came to you, because it's such an undertake or overtake, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, huge. Right. All the things that you're you're applying to this one platform. How did you how did you find the people to even work with, or did you like? How did you it's even crazy. make the team dream team happen? It's amazing. It's amazing. I was looking on Upwork. Upwork. Uh, if you guys don't know it, Upwork is Craigslist for finding technical, you know, uh, computer developers and things like that. It's global mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. uh, Upwork is an, and freelancer.com. So I found my CTO, his name is Anz. He's a brilliant, brilliant computer scientist, Unreal developer, VR. He's just amazing, amazing, mm-hmm. young guy. And uh, I found him on Upwork. I wanted to like create an environment. And I found it was a needle in the haystack. There's so many, I'm sure a lot of people that will hear this will have had used Upwork. And it's really hard mm-hmm. to find good talent, you know, because you'll get someone in Croatia or, you know, China or whatever, and they'll do a half-assed job just to get the money, you know, but mm. this guy Anzi was the real deal. It was like a needle in a haystack. So that was in 2015, 2015. Oh, wow. and we're still, yeah. So we started with just the two of us Then we hired one guy then we hired another guy. Boom. We have 22 people now working, working under our roof, 22 people. 22 developers, yeah. you know, graph, uh, 3D artists, uh, C++ developers, Unreal developers, uh, blockchain developers, front end, back end, full stack developers. It's really something. One by one over three years, just hand picking. And they have to fit the company culture too. So it's like mm-hmm. it, the company culture is is absolutely essential. You know, If you're not, you get churned. People will just be like, I'm out of here. It's just a check. But if you feel yeah. invested, like this is a family, it's it just, it, it adds so much. We found it. Especially in that space, because you guys need to be able to fuel each other's energy and something 100%. that constantly things might be going wrong or this, that, and the other, and the frustration of it all. You don't need anybody going postal, you know, yes. <laughs> anything else. 100%. Or, or also being able to trust them with all the information that you're That's coming up with. It. And yeah. That's and it, because there's secret it. sauce. There's a lot of secret sauce in our, because we've created something that doesn't exist. So we had to like create some proprietary ways to like, do this stuff. Yeah, and yeah. so the funny thing is like, like you let people in and look under the hood. It's like under, knowing what the KFC secret ingredients are. It's like, kill that guy. He's leaving. <laughs> kill him. You can't leave without him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a, <laughs> yeah. or Coca-Cola, it's a guarded secret. So mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah. You don't want your, you don't want spies going out and, you yeah. know, you don't want a cold war, you know, <laughs> people coming and taking your stuff to another development house. Don't yeah. yeah, yeah. Your, your What's the saying? Um, you, be careful who you build with because they could be bu- taking bricks to build elsewhere as well or something to right. that effect. So, yeah, um, I'm excited about all of this. So 2024, Moshpit's coming to you, but you're still working in the music space as well, Somewhat. right? I teach UCLA, yeah. I've been teaching there forever, but I do that for fun. Uh, so talk around. a little bit about teaching at UCLA in case somebody's out there thinking about going to music school. Why? I mean, for obvious reasons, it's literally right there in Bel Air, Fresh Prince. Hello. No, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> Our backyard is Bel Air. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. USC's backyard is the Heezy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, USC is, yeah, very, nice very neighborhood. neighborhood. Even though it's like University of Spoiled Children, it's not in the best place. <laughs> no, it's like it's like paradise amongst, it's got a big old moat, which is the hood in paradise, right? <laughs> well, Duke's like that too. Well, I mean, and the idea of hood here is like almost. Um, exactly. In a way, because it's like brick housing and stuff. You're like, mm, yeah. this is really nice compared right. to what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I've seen barracks that are worse than this. So, oh my god, That's, that. yeah, North Carolina is pretty mild. Yeah. USC yeah. is in the heezy, in the hoodie. Yeah, but yeah, UCLA. I teach. Uh, I've been teaching there for about 17 years. I teach wow. uh, music production, mixing, mastering, 3D audio, uh, signal flow, some music business stuff. It's really fun. It's really fun. I'm it's sure really- you're a fun teacher, Dale. Oh, yeah. The first day I kick worm across the desks. I like, There's a long table and I do the kick worm just to break it up. You know, I'm like, there used to be people saying, okay, day one. I like, definitely want a video of that. Here's editing. my syllabus. Here's my <laughs> syllabus. <sir. laughs> nah, you're right. I'm the worst yeah. company, man. I'm the worst company, man. I'll kick <sighs> worm across the desk. Be like, lighten up. Yeah, lighten yeah. Up. yeah. I love that because I in a previous life, I wanted to be an um, instructor and my dreams. It's so fun. Crash. Really? Well, it was the little time I was there, but I was working for a horrible company. You know what's the craziest thing about teaching? The Mm. craziest thing about teaching is when you have to explain something verbally to another human, it makes your brain fire differently 
than thinking of, because I know like how to use a compressor, an LA-2A compressor, right? I know how to do it in my head and how to explain it, but when I have to explain it to someone else, the neurons fire differently. And internally, you're like, damn, I didn't even know I could say it that way. Because yeah. you had to articulate it. It's different than the internal knowing. It's really something. I've had so many, I probably had a thousand aha moments over the last you know, 15 years talking about stuff or someone asked me a question. I didn't know it, but just by boop, 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 the brain just mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm a dig in the crates. Here's some, boop, boop. <laughs> and you feed them the answer. And you're just like, in my head, I'm like, damn, I didn't even know I knew that. Yeah, no, I could see that. I can see that. I was um, trying to be an esthetician instructor. So yeah, I am I may revisit that at some point. I don't know. I, I'm at this point in my age. I'm doing a lot of midlife crisis stuff, I guess, where I'm trying to figure out what to do now, especially with like the strikes and this. Like, I'm like, okay, I need to find more consistent things. As much as I love entertainment, I want my goal is to buy my daughter her car flat out. I want to get her college fund completely saved up because she wants to go to medical school. And I didn't have that when I was growing up. I had to pay for college myself and I like graduated debt free, but it took me longer because I had to work. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. my parents divorced. So that was why they couldn't help. Not not sure if they had a savings plan for me anyway, but just saying, um, it was a lot going on when I decided to go, well, not decided, but when I had to go to college. So I don't want right. her to have to worry about that because I think there's, life is so much easier when you don't have to worry about your medical, your yes. bills, yeah. your work. And it, like you can just focus on your schooling or whatever. And so I just, I want that for her. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's happening because, you know, <laughs> I am still who I am. And it's hard to work in corporate worlds when you're um, the fun kid. So I know. It's so hard. It's hard <laughs> to be a company man. Yeah. <laughs> it might be good. That might be good to try again. So tell everyone how they can keep up with you, how they can find out more, how they can get involved with Moshpit uh, and keep up with the idea or know when the launch is going to happen, too. Yeah. Moshpit.live. 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 <laughs> Simple as that. Everything's there. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Daryl, this has been amazing talking to you. You're going to have to come back when it's live and share even more information about it. And then we can see all the cool stuff some creators have created and the possible your big wig thing and your um, crossover thing that we didn't talk about because I wasn't sure if you're allowed to talk about it yet. But maybe mm -hmm. the next time we can talk about it because... I have some gamers in the house that are like, what? So sweet, um, sweet. that was a nice little drop. So you kind of have to tune in and wait and see the next part. Right. But Daryl, right. thank you so much for being my guest today. I oh, thanks, truly man. enjoyed speaking with you and you making the time to talk to me because I know your schedule is hella busy, but the joys of holiday break. <laughs> hilarious. I, love I, it. I, could, I could talk to you all day, Camille. You're hilarious. Very engaging. I, Very engaging. I try my best. I try. You know, I think it's the only child thing. Like I love talking to people and moving around so much. It's, I was always the new kid and I didn't want people to ask me a bunch of questions. So I'm just used to You're used sharing to. the space. And then when necessary, I pull out a story because it fits too perfectly to ignore it. But yeah, I try my best. <laughs> I really, I just love connecting with people and yeah. it gets my, like you said, it gets your brain firing in different it ways. Does. Like, oh, maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe that's it what, does. you know, so we'll see. No, All right. Great. Well, again, that's great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I cannot wait to play with Mosh Pit and um, looking forward Thank to you. hearing more great things from you. Thank you so much, Camille. I'll talk to you later, right?